All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and it is official. Carson Wentz has been named the starter versus the Browns, and more than likely for the remainder of the season, I can't really see them starting Wentz and then going back to Heineke. The only other option is maybe going to Sam Howell if the last game doesn't matter because we lose to the Browns, the Seahawks, and the Lions win. But we're going to talk about that. But the most important thing is the fact that Carson Wentz was chosen over Taylor Heineke for the remainder of this playoff push and you know i'm hoping that we make the playoffs i'm gonna speak it into existence and all of that so of course i'm gonna take a look at a couple of plays for what carson wentz did really well against the 49ers when he came in on that final drive we're gonna take a look at that and take from that what we can because there was definitely obvious improvement in that one drive compared to what he did at any point before he got hurt and taylor heineke became the starter is this a new and improved carson wentz or was that just a fluke against a defense that didn't prepare for him? Of course, we're going to take a look at a lot of advanced stats as well. And we got to debate whether this is the right or wrong move. Of course, I want to see y'all answers in the comment section. But definitely wait till you reach the end of the video after I provide y'all with the stats and some of the film study to make that decision and to provide your input. And also, of course, is it time for Sam Howe? Like I just spoke about earlier. So we're definitely going to talk about all three quarterbacks in this video and whether or not this was the right or wrong move by Ron Rivera. Does he have any ulterior motives with this move or does he just genuinely want to put the best quarterback out there that has the best chance of taking us to the playoffs because honestly if we make it to the playoffs this year this will be the second time out of three Ron Rivera coached years that we've made it to the playoffs even though we tripped and fell and accidentally made the playoffs metaphorically in that first year but still as bad as it's felt this could be the second time out of three years that we've made the playoffs on the Ron Rivera. And this could be a very important move into making sure that happens. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every game day for the live play-by-play -play analysis on this channel. So this upcoming Browns game, the Cowboys game after that, and whoever we play in the playoffs after that, because again, I'm speaking it into existence, it will more than likely be the minnesota vikings just based on seedings and i would love to run that back i would love that rematch so i'm really excited about that but we got to handle business right now so again make sure you pull up for the live stream for every game even preseason game so make sure you pull up every time the commanders are doing anything and without further ado let's get it All right, so it's been announced that Carson Wentz will start this Sunday versus the Cleveland Browns. Wentz broke his right finger in October and later lost the starting job to Taylor Heineke. The commanders are 7-7-1, clinging to the NFC's seventh seed and final playoff spot, and they need Wentz to come through right now. That was a tweet from Adam Schefter, even though I spice it up a little bit to make it sound a little bit better. You know, I did my thing. Also, Justina Anderson tweeted, I'm also told that if the commanders go into week 18 with a meaningful game for a play off contention they currently expect to start Carson Wentz then again too if not they will likely look to evaluate Sam Howell more next week so that's really interesting Carson Wentz you go out there beat the Browns and as long as the I mean it really doesn't matter if the Seahawks or the Lions win or lose if you beat the Browns you're still the seventh seed in the NFC and still have a spot in the playoffs of the playoffs where to start this upcoming Monday but if you go out there and fold, and I feel like if we lose to the Browns, it's going to more than likely be on the quarterback, which I felt like most of these games have been. Whether we've tied, we've lost, or even some games we've won, I feel like we've been winning in spite of the quarterback at times. And that's with Wentz and Heineke. But especially during the Heineke run when we were winning quite a bit, I felt like a lot of our struggles came from quarterback play, offensive line, and Scott Turner's inconsistency with play calling. But I feel like the defense has pretty much done everything they needed to do to win games, especially outside of this recent 49ers game. But then again, you could argue the defense didn't play as well as they, and they weren't as dominant as they were in previous games. But the offense put them in a lot of ugly situations where the 49ers didn't have to go as far to score really outside of that big 71 yard touchdown when the game was still relatively close. So again, like I've been saying in several videos, I feel like it's been quarterback play, offensive line. You could debate one or two. And I feel like Scott Turner's inconsistent play calling, it was probably be number three as to why we've struggled. But back to my main point, if we 
we lose to the Browns, I'm pretty sure Carson Wentz would be a big reason for it because the Browns are a really talented team, but that talent hasn't necessarily produced to the level that they should on the field, especially like a Deshaun Watson who has not played very well yet at all. He looks like a guy that hasn't played football in over a year. So if we lose to the Browns, it's quite likely we're out of the driver's seat for the playoffs and they may just go ahead and take some time to go look at Sam Howell. Just again, based on whether or not the Lions or the, or the Seahawks win or lose. So I just thought that was really interesting. The fact that we could see some Sam Howell before the playoffs. We'll see though. I mean, who knows? The Seahawks and Lions lose and we beat the Browns. They'll probably take a look at Sam Howell in that Cowboys game as well because at that point we may not be able to affect the playoff seed and honestly I would prefer to play the Vikings anyway as the seventh seed than being the sixth seed and playing the 49ers. I'm not gonna lie. I would definitely much more prefer to run that back with the Vikings. We should have beat them. Taylor Heineke doesn't just literally throw the game away. Now speaking of Taylor Heineke, shouts out to Chris Cooley for tweeting this out. Really interesting stat. Taylor Heineke finishes the 2022 season having only one game with a 60 plus pass passing grade and that was week 10 against philly with a 71.5 so you could argue that was his best game of the season and even that game wasn't great 71.5 passing grade isn't like isn't really good at all but and, and then the fact that that's his best one is crazy and so Cooley continues to say his 48.9 overall passing grade as far as all of his starts through the season that's pretty much what he's averaged ranks 37th out of 38 qualifying quarterbacks now i wouldn't necessarily say that taylor heineke has been that bad but it just proves the point that we have in fact been winning in spite of him i don't know why a lot of people just don't see that i'm not sure people just not really looking at the film i know scott turner is a lot to blame but if you really look at the film man i've been telling y'all there have been receivers open there have been plays there and taylor heineke either won't see him he'll underthrow him he'll overthrow him things like that if you really look at the all 22 you'll realize that man heineke love him love his heart Love the fact that we had a Metro Atlanta born and raised quarterback leading my favorite NFL team. I mean, I absolutely love that. That was one of the main reasons I wanted us to draft Malik Willis. It was also his talent, of course, but, you know, me being from Atlanta, having somebody from Atlanta being the pretty much the face of my NFL franchise who is not an Atlanta franchise is, is pretty much a dream come true. But at the end of the day, you got to look at the fact that he's just not it. I love what he does to this team. I love the fact that he raises the morale and guys love to play for him and things like that. But at the end of the day, he misses too many open opportunities. And again, I'm not alleviating any blame from Scott Turner. I feel like he is drastically inconsistent. Like I said, I feel like he's a great play designer, but a bad play caller and his situational awareness and when to call certain plays is not great. But at the same time, when you do get great plays called by Scott Turner, which are few and far in between, please be ready to take advantage and Taylor Heineke rarely is. Now also shouts out to Dan Steinberg for tweeting this. From the five to the 14 yard line, the low red zone, Heineke has completed 33% of his passes, by far the worst mark in the NFL. Since 2000, out of 752 qualified quarterbacks, Heineke's completion percentage there is tied for 727. That's not good, people. Again, I'm not trying to get on Taylor Heineke's head a lot because Carson Wentz has his fair share of weaknesses as well, and we're going to dive into that. But for those of y'all who may be really down on the fact that Taylor Heineke got benched for Carson Wentz, I'm just trying to provide some context as to why Ron Rivera and the guys made this decision. Now, if we would have just take the time to look at some advanced statistics for Carson Wentz as well, you would probably have the same like, ooh, that's horrible type of face. Both Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke have their weaknesses. And my point has been really the majority of this season is that it's not necessarily that I'm done with Taylor Heineke and I believe Carson Wentz is the answer. I'm ready to draft the quarterback. I'm ready to see what Sam Howell can do and things like that. But at the same time, it's a little weird because we still have an honest chance to make the playoffs. And like I said, I feel like we have an honest this chance to beat the vikings and at least win one playoff game so that's where it gets a little fuzzy so that's when the debate turns into taylor heineke versus carson wentz because it's like who gives us the best chance to win right now now when the offensive line was absolutely atrocious i've been saying Taylor Heineke was better than Carson Wentz, at least for this offense, because the offensive line was so bad at pass protecting. And they haven't necessarily gotten much better, but 
I've always wanted to see what Carson Wentz would look under this new run the ball, run heavy. Brian Robinson going for over five yards a carry type of offense. I always wanted to see what Carson Wentz could do with that. Jahan Dotson becoming Jahan Dotson. Terry McLaurin, all of these guys becoming better players. And Scott Turner learning how to utilize these guys a little bit better week to week. Still not great, but I've always been curious what Carson Wentz would look in this new offense that Taylor Heineke was running because with Carson Wentz, we were telling him to drop back for times a game and figure it out but when as soon as taylor heineke became the starter that's when we became this super run heavy team with an elite defense as well and speaking of defense i don't think it's a coincidence that every game that camera curl hasn't played has have been the worst games that our defense has played as a whole this year you could argue cameron curl may be the most important player on this team you could definitely argue he may not be the best player, but you could argue he's definitely the most important. Because as much as I love Jonathan Allen, you could argue he's definitely the best player on the defense. Without him, with the rotation of guys we have as depth, you can maybe make up for it a little bit. But when Cameron Curl is gone, and he's literally like the quarterback of the defense and telling people where they need to be and stuff like that, that's when you have those big plays, George Kittle wide open down the field. Cameron Curl there, that doesn't happen. So you could definitely argue that Cameron Curl is the most important player on the defense. And it just sucks because Carson Wentz, one of the main games that made us lose faith in him. Cameron Curl wasn't there for the Detroit game. And then sadly for Taylor Heineke, the game that got him benched, Cameron Curl wasn't there. And I feel like, honestly, that second quarter from Taylor Heineke was the best isolated quarter he's had all season. I feel like it's not even really even up to debate. I feel like it's not even close. So it really sucks because you could tell that Ron Rivera was just ready to go to Carson Wentz no matter what. I mean, it was already announced pretty much to the public that if Taylor Heineke messes up, Carson Wentz is ready to go in. Ron Rivera is ready to go to Carson Wentz. So poor Taylor Heineke, he looked like he was even playing like he knew that in the first quarter. He wasn't playing as loose as he does. He was playing a little bit nervous. But then in the second quarter, he gave us honestly his best quarter of football all season and i definitely feel like that 49ers game was nowhere near one of his worst games of the season if you had to rank his games from best to worst throughout this season i feel like that 49ers game is somewhere in the middle honestly and definitely not one of the games that he deserved to be benched the most for i can remember three games off the top of my head heineke should have been benched for more than whatever that game just was and a couple of those games may even be included in some of the wins that we got because I feel like we won quite a few games in spite of Heineke. But at the same time, that 49ers game was not that bad, honestly. But you could just tell they were ready to move on to Carson Wentz either way. And then that interception he threw was just so bad. It just gave Ron Rivera the perfect opportunity to go to Carson Wentz. But again, going back to my point, I just think that Carson Wentz having the opportunity to go against a Browns team that's underperforming, a Cowboys team that may rest starters, and with this new heavy run game, this new very efficient run game that wasn't there when Carson Wentz was here. And again, it's also, you can say that Taylor Heineke may be able to take some credit for that because his use of his legs and being able to convert third downs occasionally gives us the opportunity to run the ball because he's like in an extension of the run game at times even though I still feel like Taylor Heineke should have ran way more than we let him I don't know if that's Scott Turner's fault I don't know if that's Ron Rivera's fault or if it's Taylor Heineke's fault that he's playing nervous and he maybe was trying to and maybe was trying to play a little bit more conservative to stay healthy so that Carson Wentz wouldn't get an opportunity to start again I don't know either way I feel like Taylor Heineke should have used his legs way more up to this point but either way the run game has been great with Taylor Heineke and the quarterback but I feel like some of that is Taylor Heineke he deserves some credit for that but I feel like most of it is because Scott Turner has just become very stubborn and is going to run the ball no matter what even when we probably should and then also I just feel like the offensive line even though we're down to a lot of backups at least it's the same guys that have played together and alongside each other for quite a bit of games now in a row for the most part. So now it seems like they have somewhat of a better chemistry. It's not just talent. Chemistry matters a lot with offensive line. And I feel like they're learning how to run block way better as a unit. Since Taylor Heineke has been a has been in a quarterback as well so i'm really interested in seeing what carson wentz would look like in that offense rather than the force 40 throws a game versus the 40 runs a game and carson wentz can just play action deep ball him off of that really interested in seeing how that looks and also as far as taylor heineke before we dive into this offensive line and carson wentz because we got to talk about this offensive line that's a big part of this once heineke went zero and two and one that whole you know he he just wins 
argument basically went out the window and, and that's what it is when you look at on paper traits and intangibles and positives and negatives you feel like Carson Wentz should be the better quarterback and in an ideal offense where the offensive line looks like how looks like how the commander's offensive line looked last year I trust Carson Wentz more with a clean pocket but at the same time I trust Taylor Heineke more with a bad pocket and that's what this offensive line was giving us for the majority of the season. And even during this 49ers game, quite a bit. Even though, I mean, at the end of the day, Nick Bosa's leading the NFL in sacks for a reason. It seems like nobody can block that guy. I'm pretty sure he's beating Trent Williams in practice. But yeah, man, that whole Taylor Heineke, all he does is win. I mean, we can't say how or why. Once you're zero two and one, that goes out the window. And then at that point, there's not much of an argument for Taylor Heineke to be the starting quarterback because that was the main argument. We win when he's in that quarterback. Once he stops winning, then what? Again, love Taylor Heineke, but he's very limited. This offense will only go so far with him. Now, Carson Wentz has higher variance. He, he could potentially go out there and take our offense to score 40 points, or he could go out there and get sacked nine times like against the Eagles. I mean, it, he's either going to be worse or better than Heineke. I just don't really see him going out there and being just about the same. Now, over the course of a season, it could end up being about the same, but on a per-game basis, he's either going to go out there and outperform Heineke or look way worse, and we're just going to feel stupid for even throwing him out there. Those are really the only two possibilities I see happening in a final two-game sample. But again, I'm really interested to seeing what Wentz looks like with this power running game led by Brian Robinson because he's obviously not the same running back that he was when Carson Wentz was out there against the Bears as well again all we got to do is win out you beat the Browns and the Cowboys doesn't matter what the Lions and Seahawks do you make it to the playoffs and are more than likely playing the Vikings so all you got to do is go out there and handle business man but and I also want to take some time I definitely want to dedicate some time to thank Heineke because that's six one and one run even though I felt like we won some of those games in spite of you man we couldn't have done it without you with Carson Wentz hurt especially who knows I've wanted to go to Sam Howell from the beginning but who knows if you throw Sam Howell out there and he looks like a rookie maybe we're not in this situation right now where we can make the playoffs so man I want to thank Taylor Heineke for everything you've done but it's only but so far that you can go with Taylor Heineke but I really do want to take some time that if any for any reason Heineke's watching this video I want to thank you for everything you did man it was really fun, I'm not going to lie. Now let's take a look at this offensive line because pass protection-wise, if you're looking at ratings, as far as win rates and things like that, the commander's offensive line is 28th out of the entire NFL in pass blocking that is atrocious man and you can tell it looks like it on the field it really does i blame some of the i blame some of it on injuries but i also blame some of it on personnel decisions now even though andrew norwell has improved these past few weeks He's still not a top tier left guard. I liked what I saw from Eric Flowers last year way more. And then Trey Turner and the constant rotation of who's in at right guard has been weird. And that hasn't worked out very well. And then lately, Charles Lindo has been getting beat quite a bit. Even though I still feel like a lot of people are on or down on him a little bit too much from when he's done these past couple of weeks. But I mean, allowing a strip sack for a fumble against the Giants for a touchdown, pretty much the main reason we lose that game. And then getting beat like that by Nick Bosa. I know it's Nick Bosa, but at the end of the day, we pay you money to go out there and block guys like that. If the only time we cared about how well you blocked were against non-elite edge rushers then we wouldn't pay you the big money that you get so we need you to perform against guys like nick bosa just because it's nick bosa does not provide an excuse for you to allow two sacks in a game type of stuff so we need you to be better man but isolated just only looking at the 49ers game here's the chart for how bad the commander's offensive line was at pass protecting i mean on an island by themselves as far as terrible efficiency and so I feel sorry for Taylor Heineke at that point as well. But then at the same time, when Carson Wentz came into the game, it looked like the offensive line could suddenly block. And that's because even when they blitz, and teams are going to blitz Carson Wentz these last two games for sure, and especially in the playoffs as well, when we make it, because they know that Carson Wentz, at least history shows this season that Carson Wentz is not good against the blitz. That one isolated drive against the 49ers, he was excellent against the blitz. So I don't know if that was a fluke or if Carson Wentz has actually improved. Ron Rivera said something to the extent of that him being able to watch from the sideline actually helped him learn how to adjust to the blitz rather than the 
blitz coming to hit him in the chest and he having to learn on the field so we'll see how this goes man i'm really interested in seeing how that works out shouts out to ben standig for these next few sentences he said washington has allowed 42 sacks tied with cincinnati for the eighth most in the nfl more than half 23 occurred over the first six games with wentz under center that's terrible but then came this three game dip with 10 sacks and 51 quarterback pressures after Heineke was sacked nine times in his first six starts. The 49ers battered Heineke two sacks, four QB hits in Saturday's 37 to 20 win over the commanders before Wentz entered the, during the fourth quarter. Up to a certain point, we were handling it pretty well against the 49ers, Rivera said of the offensive line. And then once it got to a certain point, it became tough on those guys, unquote. Tough indeed. The 49ers registered two sacks, seven QB hits, and 19 pressures in the game. Their 52.8% pressure rate on dropbacks was the highest against Washington this season. Yes, even more than the week three debacle when the Eagles sacked Wentz nine times while finishing with the 41.8 pressure rate. And that goes to show the difference between Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz. Because Taylor Heineke was pressured over 52% of the time against the 49ers, and yet he was only sacked twice. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz in that Philadelphia game was pressured 42% of the time, slightly under 42% of the time, and was sacked nine times that's the difference between taylor heineke taylor heineke is pressure more and gets sacked way less carson wentz is pressure less and gets sacked way more so that's the problem history shows that we've had with carson wentz compared to taylor heineke over the course of the season but again isolated on that one drive that carson wentz went out there against the 49ers to play very well that looked like a completely different quarterback so that's the thing with Taylor Heineke. That's my biggest problem going from Carson Wentz to Taylor Heineke. Going from Taylor Heineke to Carson Wentz. Now, in pretty much every other way other than that, I do prefer Carson Wentz. In an ideal world, with an offensive line that could actually pass and protect pretty, pretty well, I obviously prefer Carson Wentz. But, I mean, that stat alone is very startling. The fact that Taylor Heineke can get pressured way more and take less sacks and Carson Wentz can get pressured way less and take more sacks is very startling. And I'm worried about that, especially going up against the Browns and the Cowboys. I mean, those defensive lines, man, and the way that they those guys blitz and Micah Parsons, Davion Clowney and Miles Garrett. Yeah. I'm scared for him, man. I'm not going to lie, man. But they've obviously just gotten to the point where they're like, hey, man, Carson Wentz, you just got to figure it out because we need your arm strength. That throw to Curtis Samuel, I mean, perfectly on the dot. Love Taylor Heineke, but I don't think he can make that throw. At least not as automatic as Carson Wentz made it look. I would expect Taylor Heineke to maybe make that throw one out of every seven attempts, maybe. If he would have just constantly run that play over and over again, maybe he would make that throw. But let's take a look at some really interesting plays from Carson Wentz that should make you very optimistic about this upcoming about these upcoming two games because again a lot of his weaknesses have been getting the ball out on time being able to deal with pressure guys blitzing guys coming at him and being able to you know keep his head up and get the ball to the right guy with all of that pressure in his face and I feel like these next couple of plays should give you a lot of optimism as far as Carson Wentz moving forward as our starter again we got to see it throughout the course of an entire game after a defense actually game plans for Carson Wentz rather than game planning for Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz coming into the game out of nowhere even though the 49ers should have been prepared because Ron Rivera made it obvious to the public that if Taylor Heineke gives him an opportunity to put Carson Wentz out there he's gonna put Carson Wentz out there so the 49ers should have game plan for both honestly they should have known at a certain point with the way Ron Rivera was talking Carson Wentz was gonna be out there at some point anyway but yeah man this first play the way that Carson Wentz deals with the pressure and gets the ball out like that for the dump off is just amazing because against the Eagles that was a sack against a lot of opponents when Carson Wentz was our starter that's just straight up a sack or a bad throw and an interception but apparently he's a new and improved guy yeah man that that play Play would have been way worse before this 49ers game I, I guess whatever he's been doing on the sideline watching his help because he was not doing that before Taylor Heineke became the starter plain and simple he just wasn't if he can continue to do that these last two games because again that's arguably the biggest case that you have for starting Taylor Heineke over Carson Wentz is something like that again Carson Wentz wasn't making those plays before Taylor Heineke became the starter if he's making those plays then Carson Wentz is obviously the right choice for the starting position but again I gotta see it over the course of an entire game and not just one drive and then also I mean this throw to Curtis Samuel man I mean it's really not much to talk about it's on a rope it's a perfect dot thrown on time Curtis Samuel doesn't even have to slow down to catch it I, I 
truly don't believe Taylor Heineke can make this throw. At least make it look as easy and as automatic as he does, as Carson Wentz does right here. I mean, look at this from multiple angles. Yeah, man, I'm not going to lie, man. If Carson Wentz can give us that ability against the blitz from the first play I showed, and then that type of accuracy from the second play I showed, I think we could definitely beat the Browns and Cowboys. The problem is he hasn't been able to show that he could do that consistently over really over the course of any game this season. I mean, arguably his best game was against the Jaguars, and even then he was good for two quarters and bad for two quarters. If he could give us what he gave us on that one drive against the 49ers for the majority of a game, we should be able to throw, we should be able to put up 40 points against both of these teams. But I highly doubt that happens. I think that's very unlikely. So that's what I'm afraid of as far as Carson Wentz goes. Can can he be that throughout the course of a game? Doubt it, but we'll see. But I feel like it is smart to go with Carson Wentz because at least he gives you the chance. Taylor Heineke, you know, with him just being so neutral and limited, he's going to be the middle. Carson Wentz has a higher ceiling, but he also has a lower floor. We'll see how this goes. I say roll the dice. If it doesn't work, let's look at Sam Howell and evaluate him before we decide to take a quarterback in the first round of this upcoming draft, not knowing what Sam Howell could give you. Now, like I said earlier, teams are going to blitz the mess out of Wentz. They're going to try the mess out of him. They're going to be like, you're going to have to show me that 49ers drive you're gonna have to show me that throughout the game so i'm pretty sure the browns and the cowboys are gonna blitz like crazy they're gonna make blitzes as complicated as possible maybe disguise their blitzes disguise their coverages make things as difficult as possible for carson wentz to be able to calculate they're gonna try him they're gonna be like hey man some wide receivers are gonna be open so what we're gonna dare you to get the ball to him before we get to you we're going to dare you to make some incredible footwork moves in the pocket to dodge some of these blitzers, to dodge some of these defensive linemen and make those plays. So don't be surprised if Carson Wentz has a lot of heat going to him compared to what Taylor Heineke was getting. I mean, our receiving core is elite and Carson Wentz obviously maximizes the potential of those guys in comparison to Taylor Heineke. Again, I mean, I just feel like overall it's time to get a new quarterback, whether it's Sam Howe or if we draft a guy, whatever. And I'm definitely one of those people that feels like if Brock Purdy can do it, Sam Howe can definitely do it because he's definitely more naturally talented. And he played at a higher level in college. I mean, he was the last draft pick of the draft for a reason. He's going out there balling out. Now, of course, you can say that, you know, Kyle Shanahan makes up the difference. And that's the difference. And, and it's really more of a Kyle Shanahan versus Scott Turner thing than a Brock Purdy versus Sam Howell thing. But I think Sam Howell is talented enough to make up that difference between Kyle Shanahan and Scott Turner, between him and Brock Purdy, to where it would pretty much even out. And I can see Sam Howell being very successful. But of course, with us being this close in the playoff hunt and with does literally be in the seventh seat right now it's really difficult to throw that risk out there at this point but i said we should have gone with Howell as soon as carson Wentz got hurt but then again we went six one and one under taylor heineke for a brief period so i can't be too mad i see why they didn't go with sam Howell, especially with the defense this elite at times and the run game that's finally learning itself that's starting to finally figure itself out hey man it's serious also i've been bringing this debate topic up that i want to know what, how people feel about it is that i mean i know scott turner a lot of people think he's just the worst part of this whole team he's the main reason we've been losing again i would give you top three i wouldn't say number one necessarily and my point has been would you prefer taylor heineke and andy reed or would you prefer pat mahomes and scott turner and that further proves my point that it has been quarterback more than scott turner again scott turner has been a lot to blame for a lot of stuff but would you prefer Jalen hurts and scott turner or taylor heineke and the eagles offensive coordinator and that's just been my point this whole time now that doesn't really have much to do with carson wentz because i'm not comparing him to either of those guys at all but that just goes to show that quarterback position really matters and if Carson Wentz can give us a spark and can raise the ceiling of this offense and get us more points per game, we should win because this defense is playing at an elite level. Even though they have a couple of bad moments throughout games, they'll give up that one really bad drive, maybe a couple. But at the end of the day, they're still playing like an elite defense. And at the very least, they're playing like a defense deserve, that deserves to be in the playoffs. This offense just hasn't. And for those people that are saying that Ron Rivera probably went with Carson Wentz just to show that Wentz was a mistake and getting him and all of that type of stuff to prove himself right, I doubt it's that because if it were that, I felt like he would have thrown Carson Wentz out there as soon as he was healthy because I felt like there was an argument to be had that even though we were winning games, again, some of those games we were winning in spite of Taylor Heineke. So I felt like he would have been put Carson Wentz in if that was the case because... I mean, when you pay a guy 28 million and other guys only making like 2 million, you can go back to that 28 million per year guy 
at any time you want and i don't think it's as much of a dramatic how could you type of thing as, as many people probably thinks it is he's the guy that's making 28 million this is your season to go figure it out go figure it out type of thing so i felt like ron rivera honestly the thing he wants the most is to make the playoffs more than anything else first of all him making the playoffs two out of three years he's been his head coach gives him way more points for this fan base than for him being right with Carson Wentz. I just feel like personally. And both can happen at the same time. He could be sort of right with Carson Wentz and we make the playoffs at the same time. So I just feel like the priority is the win, but I can see why some people are saying that, but I don't think that's the case. Also, before we go, Brian Robinson is the commander's winner of the Ed Block Courage Award. The award honors NFL players who exemplify commitments to the principles of sportsmanship and courage. And that's exactly Brian Robinson. Also, Fox Office Sports just reported that the next owner of the Washington Commanders may need an extra $1 billion just to cover the costs associated with the new stadium. So not only do you have to spend like seven, eight million to outbid the other owners for actually buying a team, you're gonna need an additional billion for the stadium, which sounds great. I mean, the fact that they're preparing to spend that much money on the stadium, or at least estimating that, sounds like the stadium should be great. Should be fun, man. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like this video if you liked it if you learned anything as always man i appreciate all the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now but i really appreciate y'all man definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about this whole taylor heineke carson Wentz, and sam howell situation and i'll catch y'all later i'm out <laughs>